Hello, I'm Phil Bleasy. Welcome back to the next of my videos. Having got the swinging arm out of your Morgan three-wheeler, this little video will explain to you how to get the bearings out and check them and re-grease them and put them back again. Okay, so here's the swinging arm out on the bench. Let's have a closer look. The first thing we notice is that the corrosion resistant coating which is very poor over the whole vehicle in my opinion is just not doing the job at all so I'm going to give this one a coat of paint we also noted when the swinging arm was still in the vehicle that one of these plastic plugs was missing it was the one on the uh, near side of the vehicle or left hand side of the vehicle and I have removed the bearing which is a taper roller which just comes out from this side without too much trouble you'll notice um, the corrosion resistant coating wasn't removed before the bearing was put in there's the seal which appears to be in quite nice order and the bearing which is looking a bit greasy but not very it makes me wonder if it had a, ever had any grease in it at all um, and looking a bit brown and untidy I'll give that a good clean up and an examination and consider whether or not we should replace it. Well our bearing hasn't cleaned up too badly and I've been tempted to look in the other side, the side which did have a cap on it and there appears to be no grease behind that either so I think I'm going to knock that one out and give it a good clean up and check it over and then pack them both or put them both back in and pack them well with grease and then all should be well and of course a new plastic cap for the one that was missing you'll recall that the hydraulic pipe to the back brake was in a clip which had to be cut to get the wheel out and so I've decided I'm going to replace that with a little riv nut in there elsewhere on my site you'll find the uh, instructions on how to make and use a little homemade tool for fitting the rivet nuts little squeeze more there's a nice new rivet nut pop rivet so now a quick coat of paint and we're ready to put that back in so now we've uh, done a paint job We've just put a coat of uh, tractor paint on there which is uh, a little bit tidier than under seal but like under seal it's quite soft and doesn't chip very easily so it's ideal for this application doesn't leave much of a finish but then nobody can see this uh, when it's installed i've inspected the two bearings and discovered that they are in good enough condition to use again i think if they'd been in a high speed application high load high speed i might uh, have been tempted to change them but working in here they're uh, not even revolving so I don't think there'll be any problem with them whatsoever um, the big danger of course with oscillating bearings like this is the false Brinelling thing which starts to break up the surface of the races but there's no sign of that on these yet so I'm quite happy to put them back in I'm just pulling them back in with a length of studding and a couple of plates which have been turned up with little spigots on them to keep them nicely central there they are the outer race is now pulled all the way back in and in a second we'll fit the inners make sure that you pull the bearings all the way in give them a really good tighten up with that stud when you pull them in because if you leave them slightly short and they bed down later on you'll end up with rear wheel steering which nobody wants so now we're going to thoroughly pack the inner part of the bearing with all its rollers with multi-purpose grease something which should have been done when it was first built but obviously wasn't which is why we've got all this trouble we don't need to worry about leaving any air space in there as you would with a high speed bearing because this thing's not even revolving, it's only rocking backwards and forwards in its own space as it were. 
So with that nicely packed with grease, we can just pop it into place. And then I'll wipe a little bit of grease around that recess in the front where the seal goes. Similarly, I'll wipe a little bit of grease around the seal, pop it in position, and then we'll pull it home. Using a variety of uh, packers and plates and spacers, doesn't really matter as long as the face that's pressing on the seal is good and flat. And you just watch it and make sure it goes in square. You won't have any trouble. There we are, that side's ready to go back into the vehicle. Not forgetting, of course, just to put a little bit of grease on the inside of that seal. Just to make sure it doesn't catch up and get damaged when we put the shaft back into it. Now I'm going to do the other side.